In this notebook, I want to explain the basics of graph convolution. Uh, there, is a, there is a link to this notebook uh, below the video, so click on that link um, and find this notebook. Uh, once you've found it, you're going to go in and save a copy and drive. Okay, so uh, let's uh, run this thing. And while it's running, uh, I want to explain the sort of the, the basics of this. So I'm going to start by looking at this at this figure here, uh, which are there are two figures actually, and they come from Maria's thesis. And Maria has been really helpful with helping me in the the math uh, that we're going to use in this notebook. So so thanks, thank you, Maria. Okay, so the point of graph convolution is to turn a molecule, uh, which is basically what you what you see here. So atoms, the these gray uh, spheres connected by bonds, which are these lines. And we want to turn this molecule into a list of numbers that we're then going to give to a neural network. So we want a numerical representation of molecules. That's the, that's the point. And we're going to do that by getting numerical representations of each atom, and then we're going to take the average of the atom representations. Um, so the idea is that you have uh, uh, you view the molecule as a graph where the atoms are the nodes and the edges are the bonds. And each atom then has uh, a bunch of different features. Okay, So these uh, vectors or these lines here are numbers uh, with, with different values in them. Okay, Then you're going to take, uh, let's say you're interested in um, Let's say you're interested in node A here, right? So you're going to take the atom features, and we're going to talk about what those are, right? And you're going to multiply them by some weights, okay? And the values of these weights are going to be optimized as part of the learning process, just like you're doing weights in a normal neural network, okay? Then you have a second set of weights for the neighbors, right? So A is connected to B, C, and D. And each of these atoms have their own uh, feature vector. Okay, so you're going to add those feature vectors of A, uh, of B, C, and D, which are the neighbors, together, and then multiply them by another set of weights. Okay, then you're going to add these two, and then send them through an activation function, and that gives you a vector here of numbers that represents atom A. Okay, and then you're going to do that for each atom, add them together, uh, and take the average. And I'm going to show you uh, how that happens. Okay, so let's take a concrete example here. Um, so here I have a, a small molecule, C and C, uh, and I want to uh, have a graph convolutional representation of this molecule. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to make some uh, atom features. And the most basic property of an atom is really what, what atom is it? Is it a carbon or is it a nitrogen and so forth? And so we're going to represent these uh, as uh, one hot encoding. So in principle you could just give it the atomic number, uh, right? But the activation functions have problems with, with relatively large numbers, you know, so uh, a chlorine or a bromine would have a very high uh, number and that doesn't work well with the activation function. So instead we're going to one-hot encode. Okay, so we have for example carbon and we're going to represent that as a NumPy array um, like so. So let's say for, for the purposes of this video we're just going to pretend that we have three different atoms. Okay, so carbon is represented by a 1 in this position. Nitrogen is represented by a 1 in this position. And oxygen, which we haven't used yet, but will later, uh, then has a 1 in the last position. So that's a way of, of differentiating different atoms. Okay, and so this vector this vector right here 
um, if, if this is our atom A, right, this vector right here would represent this, this figure here, or this, this line of numbers. Okay, so that's the first thing. We have our features, atomic features. Oops, there is an error here. That should be one. Okay, that's better. Um, then the other thing we need are the weights here. And so uh, just like with weights in a neural network, we're going to start with random numbers. And uh, we have to think a little bit about the dimension of this matrix, right? So, so the dimension here, right, that we're going to multiply these two. So one dimension should be the length of this feature vector. And the other dimension of this uh, weight matrix should be the length that we want here. So how long do we want this atom vector to be? Okay, and so the, the length of these vectors here is 3. And I want a, a feature or an atom vector here of length 4. But that is completely arbitrary. That's, that's my choice. Okay, so let's get those. So just to make sure we all get the same thing, I'm going to set a random seed. Okay, and then we're going to have one weight uh, vector or a matrix. Uh, and those are going to be random values. And we want four for the the atom vector or the embedding vector, which is another word for it, and three Right, that is the length of this feature vector. Okay, and the same for W2. Okay, and just to show you what one of these looks like, right. you have a weight matrix here of random numbers between 0 and 1. I could also change this to have it between minus 1 and 1, uh, like I did in other videos, but it doesn't really matter for the, the purposes of this video. Okay. So now we're going we're gonna to perform this. We're going to start with uh, atom 1, or atom 0, I should say, which is this atom here. Right? And so that has a feature vector that we have to multiply with, with the, uh, one of the weight matrices. And then it has a neighbor here. It only has one neighbor that we're going to multiply with W2. So let's do that. <coughs> Okay, so here's our atom zero. Uh, and so we have W1, that's the weight for the atom itself, and that is a carbon atom. Okay, and then it only has one neighbor, so we have W2, and we're going to multiply that by the feature vector for a nitrogen. Okay, so Let's see what that looks like. Okay, All right. So, so we've now sort of turned this atom into a vector, right? And it's four long. I arbitrarily decided that this would be consist of four numbers, right? And now we have to do the same for atom one. So let me copy that. Uh, so atom one here is a nitrogen. And atom 1 has two neighbors, right? So it has uh, the zero atom, which is a carbon, and the two atom, which is another carbon. Okay, so, so I'm going to add those two. Uh, I should also say, so we will eventually... Um, okay, uh, then the last thing is just to send it through uh, an activation function here. And here I'm going to choose the, the ReLU activation function. Uh, so let me quickly write a little... Uh, subroutine for that. Uh, so ReLU, uh, that's going to take uh, an atom, right? And, and what all ReLU does is just set negative values to zero and leave the positive values alone. Uh, so we're just going to use the maximum function, right, between zero and the input, like that. OK, 
Okay, since we have all positive numbers here, that's not actually gonna uh, that's not gonna do anything uh, as such to the values, but we should still uh, we should still have it for in the general case. Okay, so let's run this uh, vector through the value function. And I will, let's also just display it just to see that nothing really happened in this particular case. All right, so same thing. Okay, so let's do this uh, for Adam 1 up here. Right, so Adam 1, uh, and let's just send it through the ReLU uh, function right away. All right, so we have, let's use this as our starting point. Um, so atom one is a nitrogen, and that atom is bonded to two carbon atoms, like so. All right, and then atom two is here, and actually that's the same as atom zero. Right? So it's also a carbon bonded to a nitrogen. So I can just uh, grab that from up here. I just have to remember to use my value function right away. Okay. And so then I have uh, my atomic embeddings, right? And to then have an embedding vector, a single embedding vector for the molecule, um, I just have to take the average, right? So it's atom 0 plus atom 1 plus atom 3. And we have three atoms, whoops, atom 2, sorry. And we have three atoms, so we divide by 3. And let's just show what that vector looks like. Also, while we add it, uh, let's just uh, show the other two vectors here, because we're going to refer back to them later. Okay, and notice again that atom 0 and atom 2 are exactly the same. The two vectors are the same because they're actually the same atoms uh, from a symmetry perspective. Okay, so, and then in, in principle, uh, this is now our input um, for this particular molecule, right? This is, we've turned this graph into a set of numbers, and we could now give that uh, to a fully connected uh, neural network, right? Where the, uh, the input layer would be for long. Okay, so that's basically all there is to, to, to graph convolution. Now there is a, there is a little bit more to it, um, sort of in, in, the, in terms of details, and, and that happens when you have uh, more complicated molecules. So we're going to do different types of um, uh, going to do different types of molecules here, and that's going to be a little cumbersome to code this up by hand every time. So I want to show a, a, an easier way uh, for the computer to evaluate this, okay? And so an easier way to, to generalize it, okay? And so for that, we're going to need what's called an adjacency matrix. Uh, so let's get that. Uh, so uh, our dkit can compute that. Here it is, uh, given the mole object. Okay, and all the adjacency matrix is, is just a, a matrix that indicates where the bonds are, right? So there are going to be zero on the diagonals, right? So, so you, have, it's, uh, you have one row for each atom. It's also symmetrical, right? So, so basically what you're saying is atom zero is bonded to atom one, right? Atom one is bonded to atom zero and atom two, and atom... 2, again, is just bonded uh, to atom 1. Okay, so it's just an adjacency matrix of what's next to each other. You could also con call it a connectivity matrix, what is, what is connected to, to what. 
Okay, and the other thing we're gonna need is the identity matrix uh, with, with the same size. And I'll come back to, to why that is. Okay, so uh, actually that's called NPI because the identity matrix is, is often I, and here we just have to uh, give it the size of the matrix, and that has to be the, sh the same um, as the adjacency matrix. Okay? Uh, so with those matrices in hand, uh, we can now calculate our atomic embeddings by making a feature array. Alright, so we just take the feature vectors that we've already defined right, in the correct order. Right? So atom 0 is a carbon, atom 1 is a nitrogen, and atom uh, 2 is also a carbon. Okay. So just, let's just look at that. Right? So let's see what am I missing. Oh yeah, these have to be in a list. Right? So that's just uh, the, the first one hot encoded carbon, a one hot encoded nitrogen, and a one hot encoded carbon again. Okay? And then the smart thing about this right, is that the, what, is, what is connected to what, that's all uh, encoded in the adjacency matrix. Right? So I can get my atomic embeddings right, simply by uh, taking my weights and multiplying that by the identity matrix. Uh, so this is the, the weights for the atom itself, right? Times the identity matrix times uh, the features. Right? And that has to be transpose. Right? And then, so that represents uh, this part of the embedding, and then to get this part of the embedding, the neighbors, right, I now use the identity matrix. Uh, so I can actually copy this. Right, so that's my two matrix. I have to use the adjacency matrix here instead, right? But if I do that, Okay, and compare to what I have above, right? So here's my embedding for atom zero. That's exactly the same thing as this vector. And here's my embedding uh, for atom one, and that's exactly this, right? And these two are, of course, identical, right? So that's a, that's a much simpler way of, of getting the atomic embedding vectors. Um, that, and this allows me to, to do other molecules much more quickly. Okay, so uh, before we go on, now it's very common uh, in, in some of the implementations that you're going to use later uh, that the weight matrices here and here are identical. Okay, that's in the, you know, it's a simpler model, but it's very often used. Uh, and so this is the one we're actually going to end up using. Okay, so basically I could do this, implement this simply just by putting the one matrix here, right? And actually, you can you can you can then simplify this a little bit, um, so to make it a little more uh, apparent, I can then take the feature, uh, the feature vector out. Right, and simply add the identity matrix and the adjacency matrix here, and then multiplying it by the features, and then taking the transpose of the entire thing. Now that's going to give me slightly different numbers here, right? Because I use the same weight matrix, um, but the principle is the same. Okay, I have something unmatched. Um, let's just see. 
I think I need, yes, whoops, this whole thing, this whole thing here should be transposed. Yes, so that is correct. Okay, and so just like before, we're now going to take uh, the sum of this to get, so this is the embedding for each atom, and to get the embedding for the molecule, we're simply going to take the average. Right, so atoms here, and so I'm going to add the columns. So you do that like so, and then I'm going to divide by the number of atoms. Oops, and I, let's just print it out. Yes. Okay, and that is what you would give to the neural network. Okay, so so with this equation in hand here, uh, we can now do other molecules uh, to show you some of the uh, some of the things we have to we have to implement. And so, in order to do that, I, 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 it's better to to have this embedding um, in a function. So I'm going to make a function here, right? That's going to give me the embedding vector uh, from a, for a molecule, given various atomic features, and then I also have to define this how long I want my embedding vector to be. So in this particular case, I chose four four numbers here, right? And so I want to be able to do that in the general case. Okay, so let's uh, go up and get some some code. Um, so I need uh, my random C's so that everything is uh, consistent. I need my adjacency matrix here. All right, then I need My identity matrix, like so. And let's see. Uh, then, yeah, I need to define my W. And now I'm just going to use one weight matrix here. And so I'm just going to call that W. Uh, and so Right, so this four here, that's my the length of, that I want my embed vector to be, right? And this here, that should be the number of atoms. Um, so that's basically the, the dimension of um, the adjacency matrix. Okay, so with these things in hand, I then want to return my atomic embedding. So I'm going to return that here. And my W matrix is 1. And I think that's it. Okay, so, so let's just, um, yeah, let's just start from here again. Um, well, let me run that to see if I get any errors. That looks okay. Uh, and so now, yeah, I'm going to do the same molecule, and I just want to test that. Um, well, first of all, I want to define my feature vectors for this molecule, right? So that's basically here. All right, so that's my feature vector. And now I should be able to get if everything works right, it should return this matrix right here. So, here, and I want a length of four. So, let's see if that works. So, yes, I get exactly the same thing as this vector here. All right. Great. Okay, so now we're ready to do another molecule. So let's let's copy this. And so I just want to show you that we're not quite done. There's a few problems with the implementation so far. 
Okay, so one is, for example, let's say I include a double bond here. All right, so let's draw that. And if I then uh, calculate the atomic embedding here, right, I get exactly the same thing as before, right? So I get the same embedding for these two molecules, right? And that's a problem because chemically they're different, right? Uh, this has uh, quite different properties than this, yet I'll get the same embedding, right? So I'll get exactly the same prediction. Uh, from my from my neural network, right? If I give it the same feature vector, okay. So so we have to make them somehow different, and, and there's there's actually many ways of doing that. Uh, we could include uh, a bond order in the connectivity matrix uh, to indicate that the connectivity is actually different, or if we added hydrogens, right? We would see that that these two atoms have different hydrogens number of hydrogens. Uh, but another, I'm going to show the one uh, implement, and, and these are all typically done, but there's another way to, to distinguish them, right? And that is to use um, a slightly better or a slightly more sophisticated um, feature vector, right? That includes, for example, uh, the hybridization. Okay, so we're going to define uh, an additional atomic feature in the feature vector. So let me go up and grab my feature vectors. All right, and just so we can sort of see the difference, um, right, I'm going to define the features here explicitly. And actually, we don't really need NumPy arrays anymore because we, we make it the whole thing to a NumPy array here. So let's just simplify it a little bit. All right, so this is my, this is what I get with this uh, simple feature vector. Okay, and now I'm gonna make a slightly more complicated one, right? Because I'm gonna include hybridization, right? So, so it's not just that I have a carbon, right? I now have different hybridizations. So I have an sp3 carbon, right? And so, and an sp2 carbon. And so I'm gonna distinguish those two by adding another atomic feature that gives me the hybridization. And I don't really need to, to hot encode that, right? Because, you know, typically hybridization is either 0, 1, 2, or 3, or 1, 2, and 3, right? So those numbers are sufficiently small uh, not to bother the, the activation function. Okay, so now I have sp3 carbon and sp2 carbon, and for this I'll need an sp2 uh, nitrogen also. All right, and so I'll put that here. And right now I don't need oxygen, so let's just let's just comment that out. Okay, and so if I run that now, right, I get. Oh, of course, I have to. <laughs> I have to change that here too. So that's my sp3. Uh, nitrogen is sp2. And this carbon now is sp2. Okay, let's see what went wrong here. Ah, okay, so I, I made a mistake up here. All right, so this here, that's not the number of atoms, right? That is the number of features. That's the length of my feature vector. All right, so I can get that from the shape. Yeah. So not the number of atoms, but the length of my feature vector. So let's. So that worked bef because uh, here the length of my uh, that worked before because the length of my feature vector happened to be the same length as the number of atoms, right? Three in both cases, but that won't work anymore. Okay, so let's put that in here. Okay, and let's go down here and see if we can't get this to work. Okay, great. Okay, so now you can see 
Of course, all the numbers are different, right? Because the, the length of this vector is larger. But the main point is now that these two atoms are now different. They have a different atomic embedding because they're chemically different. Right? So, so we can go up here. That The main point now is to show that that's, um, that's still, if you apply the new embedding to this molecule here, right, then you'll get the same atoms. Okay, so let's, let's grab this molecule again. All right, but let's use this embedding. Okay, so now uh, this has an sp3 carbon, it has an sp3 nitrogen, so I need to make that. So the 3 goes here, sp3, and then it has an sp3 carbon here as well. Uh, let's see now, that needs to be sp3. Right? And so if I run that, yes, the, the numbers are different, right? but these two atoms are still equivalent because they're also chemically equivalent, right? And that's because I have an sp3 here in both cases, whereas up here I have an sp3 and an sp2. All right, so let's do a slightly more complicated molecule. Okay, so I'm going to add here at the end an oxygen. So we finally get to use our oxygen. Right, and now I'm going to uh, do the embedding for that. So, uh, so let's grab that here. And let's see if I have everything I need. I have an sp3 carbon, an sp3 nitrogen, an sp3 carbon, and now here I'll need an sp3 oxygen. Okay, so I need to make that. And so that's easily done just by adding a 3 here. Right, and so let's look at that embedding. Okay, so now if we compare this vector to this vector, right, we can see that the embedding for these two atoms here is exactly the same as the embedding for these two atoms here. Right? And so that's potentially a problem because the, the sort of the chemistry of this nitrogen, right, is affected by this oxygen, okay, because for, for, for chemical reasons. And so it is kind of problematic, uh, right, that, that it's, it's saying that the, the chemistry of this is completely identical to the chemistry of this. And so the way uh, you deal with that in graph convolution is to is to repeat the process, uh, but now you use the feature vector. Uh, now you use this atomic embedding here instead of the feature vector. Okay, so let me just uh, let me just show you what I mean by that. All right. So now we're going to get a second embedding. But instead of the feature vectors here, I'm going to use this vector. So that's atom, and that has to be uh, transposed. Right? So you have two graph convolutional layers. Right? And if you do that, right, then you can see now that um, well, the, the things have changed, but in order to really demonstrate that this has worked, right, we have to go up here and do the same thing for this, right, to show that the vectors are actually different. So we're going to come up here, we're going to grab this code, right, and we're going to insert it here. And then we're going to run the cell again. So now the molecule is this molecule. We get the atomic embeddings. We add another layer. 
right? And if we compare, it's going to be a little bit difficult, uh, but maybe we can just, just manage, right? So now this atomic vector here for this atom, right? That's identical, right? So we're saying the chemistry of this is not affected by the presence of this atom, right? But this vector here, which is the vector for the nitrogen, right? That is now different, right? That has been affected uh, by the presence of this, right? So basically, every time you do a convolutional layer, you go, you go you go one neighbor out, right? So the first we have this and its neighbor, uh, right? And now we go further out in the second one. Okay, and then just to 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 wrap everything up here. Um, we still go in at the end, now that we're happy uh, with our convolution, and we average the atomic feature vectors. Uh, where, do I, where did I do that? I did that way up here, yes. Right, to get our molecular embedding. Now I have to use atoms 2 here. Right. And that is what I would give. Um, oh, uh, yeah, no, I made a mistake here. Right, so we no longer have three atoms, we now have four. Right? So it's probably better just to, to hard code that. So atoms um, two, and then take the shape of that. Right? So the, the number of columns, right, is equal to the number of atoms. Okay. Right, so that's that's. Oh, I need to. I need to. I need to run this again, like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay, right. So that's my embedding for this molecule here, and that's then what I would give to the neural network. Now you'll notice that these uh, these numbers are starting to be quite big, right? Which is not a, a great input uh, for a neural network. So there are all, there are other techniques where you where you go in and, and normalize this, uh, but that's just scaling the values in such a way that they're they're closer to to one. Um, but so that's not really important. That the main thing is the the, the, the how uh, the the chemical structure of the molecule right influences the embedding. So to give an example, uh, I can recommend this, this excellent online book called Demo, uh, written by Andrew White. And so he has a very nice chapter on graph convolution here that, that you can read. And uh, he implemented uh, a whole graph convolutional uh, neural network, but basically it's, it's very similar to what we did, right? So he has, in this particular case, uh, th four graph convolutional layers, right, where we just did two, but it's basically just repeating uh, the process, right, to get the effect of uh, neighbors that are further and further away from the atom of interest, right, and then he has this pooling, right, which is just an average, and then uh, he gives that to a dense uh, neural uh, network, right, so, so he, he um, had just cho chosen a hidden layer with a 10H activation function. Uh, right, and then six, uh, six, with 16 nodes, right, and then an output node, so this here would be for regression, right, and so my main point here is that you train the entire thing, right, so all the weights, both of the neural network and the graph convolutional layers are, are trained uh, using backpropagation in, the sac in exactly the, the, the way that it's done for, for just the dense layer. And finally, uh, later we'll use an implementation of graph convolution in the program called DeepChem, right? And here is the, here is the, the input for that, right? So, so you have here, uh, these two 64s mean that you, as, as a default, you have two graph convolutional layers, right? Where the, the, the weight matrix has a dimension of 64, right? And then you feed that um, to a dense layer uh, with 128 hidden nodes, right? And then the number of atomic features here is 75. So, so you calculate 75 uh, different atomic features. But, but, but basically, um, it does the same type of thing as, we've, as I've shown you in this, uh, in this very simple notebook.